दो मिनट खड़ जा कोई शेयर क्या करा गया अपना स्क्रीन दसी स्टेप्स दसी यार एक तो शेयर स्क्रीन इतना पहले उन्हें खोलना सच पहले उन्हें ऑन करना पड़ेगा ठीक करना पड़ेगा फिर होगा इन मिनिमाइज कितनों करा इतनों करा तीनों बढ़ी करना पड़ेगा जड़ी डेस्कटॉप पे रखी हुई है तो वो दिन खोल ली हो शेयर करके फिर नहीं खोलती नहीं पता नहीं पिछली बार कैसे पहला खोल लो खोल लो फिर इन्हें मिनिमाइज कर लो आई तो है ना उनके में चल लो आ देखे बस ओके हुन हुन इन्हें मिनिमाइज करा ना खोल लो केड़ा कर दो आहा आहा सी ना हम्म हाँ पे शेयर करके देखा मैं है हूं आ देखी आया आ जाना हूं शेयर आ गया देखी कर तो मैं शेयर किया पिछली बार भी मैं यही पंगा पे बस शेयर कर दो एंटायर स्क्रीन कर दो शेयर क्लिक कर दो कितने करा ये तो आ रहे हो नहीं जा कर आ रहे आ करा ले बस हो नहीं जा मिनीमाइज कर दिया स्टॉप शेयरिंग कर दे
गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर पाटल गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर अलका अग्रवाल एंड नाइस गुड इवनिंग मैम गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन फ्रॉम डीआईपी खुशी मैम इज देयर और एनीथिंग एल्स यस सर आई एम हियर uh in the afternoon we did at odisha do you have that same presentation sir post 6 at i had sent it at post 6 dip.com yeah yeah you have no yes. we need to share we need, we will need that uh same presentation sir same 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 modules are there no the okay. same ppts okay subha sir uh, do Hello? you want to run Huh? Want, I I can I can run. try uh, myself. Okay, sir. No issue, sir. Okay. No issue. Okay. Actually, in the afternoon, na, in Odisha, we did almost everyone has having a problem. Okay. So, okay. she only did everything for us. Okay, okay. I will try, and if uh, some problem, then we can yes ask uh, Kushi to do the needful. Doctor Patel, Doctor Subodh Bajpai will start from our end, from from UP end, and uh, then uh, I mean after a brief introduction, then we will hand it over to you. Is it okay, sir? Okay, no issue, ma'am. Uh, that's I have. Doctor. I was searching name only. No, no, Doctor no, 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 Sir will be there. Yeah, Doctor Subodh Bajpai. Subodh Bajpai, sir. Joined. Yeah, he is joined. Okay, okay. I just saw his name. I think he has. Yes, joined. yes. So he will start the proceedings. And, yes, sir. Uh, the only uh, change is. Actually, Dr. Bhaskar Shinoy sir, he is a national coordinator for this module. Yes. Actually, sir is busy in some emergency. Okay. 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 So we will skip sir's talk and then I will go with some introductory talk, hardly one or two minutes. Then we will proceed. So from the AOP UP end, we will just take five minutes. And yeah. Yes, ma'am. We will handle no the proceedings to you. Is that okay? Sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No. so uh, we have to wait for uh, who all are we waiting for i think the president and uh, secretary ciip do they usually join or uh, ma no ma'am they uh, do so basically only uh, once only they are join so uh, i think uh, then because this is a program which is going to go till 10:30 so if you feel mm -hmm. then we can uh, we can start off is that okay no ma'am we will finish by 9 o'clock no issue acha acha okay <laughs> okay so once you uh, give us a go, go ahead No, I don't have any issue. Uh, Bajpi sir is not there, na? Subodh Bajpi sir. They have to introduce. Doctor Subodh Bajpi, are you there, no? Yes, yes, sir. Yes. 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 Y
no, no, very sorry. Take your time, and then once uh, uh, because uh, our uh, uh, joint national coordinator, Dr. Sachin, is there, and uh, the first speaker is also there. So as as soon as your your uh, net gets okay, we can start off. Good evening, uh, Dr. Alka, ma'am. Good evening, and uh, good evening, Dr. Patel sir, uh, Dr. Subodh sir. Uh, good evening. Whether we should start good right now or we should wait for the uh, other delegates to join and uh, the faculty members? So here, this is only a panelist link. So I think the speakers will keep on uh, uh, getting yes, added. So I think we can start off because it is. Uh, we can start. Yeah, we can start. Okay. So very good evening. So uh, today it's a it's a privilege of Kanpur IP to host uh, such a good program on hepatitis A. Uh, we are going to have in a very good workshop on uh, hepatitis uh, about about the disease uh, infection and the management part as well as the prevention part. Uh, I welcome uh, Dr. Alka Agrawal, ma'am, the UPIP president, and Dr. S K Patil, sir, the convener of this infection this program. And very, uh, my warm welcome to Dr. Subodh Gupta, sir. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Gunjan, ma'am. I think Dr. Santosh Kumar Singh is also. Good evening, sir, and I welcome uh, in such program. So, without wasting time, I think we should start with the uh, Dr. Uh, Subodh, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you are absolutely audible, sir. So thank you so much. Uh, let me first thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity but, uh, to be with you today and uh, to discuss this important topic of hepatitis A. Uh, so is is my slide visible yes sir yes sir 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 so without wasting much time i, I if you permit me i can start with the presentation yes sir, yes, sir. okay thank you so hepatitis a in children uh, introduction hepatitis a virus accounts for most of the acute viral hepatitis a globally viral hepatitis this continues to be a global problem not only in developing countries but also in the developed countries and the most it is the most common cause of acute hepatitis and acute liver failure in india hepatitis a virus is a non enveloped single stranded ribonucleic acid virus it belongs to the genus hepatovirus of picorna variety family it is a single hav zero type that exists only transmission is by a close contact with an infected person primarily by the fecal oral route or the ingestion of contaminated food or water so this is very important that the virus uh, it uh, can survive in contaminated media for months as it remains stable and is resistant to acid and even heat up to 60 degree for even 60 minutes and in freezing environments also. So this needs to be taken into account. So pathogenesis, this is a very good slide which explains the pathogenesis of hepatitis A virus on the left side is the diagram which shows that once the oral ingestion takes place the entry of virus takes place into the gut mucosa there is a replication in the intestinal cells it reaches the liver by the portal blood virus further replicates in the hepatocytes and then the viral progeny 
is released into the bile it reaches the intestine and then shedding into the stools takes place <coughs> the mechanism of hepatocyte injury is immune mediated the average incubation period is around 30 days range is 15 to 50 days signs and symptoms appear within 3 to 5 weeks of exposure HIV viremia is followed by shedding in the feces and subsequently increase in the serum alanine amino transferase level a short term increase in the immunoglobulin IgM antibody level also takes place and then gradual long term increase in Ig antibody response this we will see in the subsequent slides in a beautiful diagram the degree of hepatic injury during hepatitis a virus infection depends on the host immune response the injury can be of two types a uh, non cytopathic or cytopathic in the first phase it is a non cytopathic stage the viral replication occurs exclusively in cytoplasm that is of the hepatocytes and hiv is released into the bile at this stage the there is no elevation of liver enzymes fecal shedding of hiv starts before the elevation of alanine amino transferase but in the second phase which is cytopathic phase there occurs fluorid portal zone infiltration necrosis occurs and even the erosion of the limiting plate and lead leading to elevation in alt hepatocellular damage occurs destruction of this destruction is not the result of direct cytopathic effect by the hiv but a process mediated by human leukocyte antigen hla restricted hiv specific cd8 lymphocytes and natural killer cells also interferon gamma the it is it plays a central role in the clearance of the infected hepatocytes so this is a diagram which explains the pathogenesis what we have discussed in the previous slides so here once the viremia takes place this is viremia goes to the its peak level at this time when fecal shedding is taking place or viremia is piling up there is no increase in the alt level but subsequently after say 2 to 3 weeks the alt starts increasing but, and at this stage when alt is increasing the viremia starts decreasing and along with alt the igm hepat anti hiv also starts increasing and subsequently this igg anti hiv also starts increasing after say 8 weeks or so the alt starts decreasing the igm also starts decreasing over say 14 to 20 weeks but igg persists the geographical distribution infection is common in low and middle income countries with poor sanitary conditions and and unhygienic practices most children say 90% have been infected with hepatitis a virus before the age of 10 years and most often they are without symptoms disease may occur in adolescents and adults in high risk groups such as persons who inject drugs men who have sex with men people traveling to areas of high endemicity and in isolated populations such as closed religious groups in the united states of america large outbreaks have been reported among the persons experiencing homelessness 
in middle income countries and regions where sanitary conditions are variable children often escape infection in early childhood and reach adulthood without any immunity the transmission of hepatitis a virus primarily it is through the fecal oral route through the dirty hands when an infected person prepares food for the family members water borne breaks through though infrequent are usually associated with sewage contaminated or inadequately treated water often when we see uh, news in the newspaper that such and such area there is a break there is a outbreak of jaundice usually it is the sewage contaminated water somewhere pipe has broken and the water is getting mixed up with the uh, drinking water this usually is a uh, epidemiological survey report so this plays a very important role in transmission the virus can also be transmitted through a close physical contact such as an oral anal sex hpv is spread by the fecal oral route the majority of the patients who acquire the illness have had personal contact with an infected person in the child care setting spread of hiv usually takes place before the index case has been recognized outbreaks are usually recognized only after the child care staff members develop symptoms such as jaundice since most of the children they remain asymptomatic or have non specific symptoms the so meaning thereby that the sometimes it is detected only when the staff who takes care of the children they develop the symptoms the potential for broad exposure is compounded in child care centers that include children who have not yet been toilet trained it further compounds it. coming to the symptom the incubation period is 14 to 28 days symptoms range from mild to severe these these can be fever malaise loss of appetite diarrhea nausea abdominal discomfort dark colored urine and jaundice yellowness of eyes and skin not everyone who is infected will have all the symptoms adults have signs and symptoms of illness much more often than children infected children under the age of 6 years do not usually experience noticeable symptoms and only 10% develop jaundice rest have only non specific signs symptom hepatitis a sometimes relapses meaning thereby the person who just recovered from hepatitis a infection falls sick again and another acute episode occurs this is not usually followed by recovery also who is at risk anyone who has not been vaccinated or previously infected poor sanitation lack of safe drinking water living in a household with an infected person and traveling to areas of high density without being vaccinated against hiv hiv is a 27 nano mm single stranded icosahedral non enveloped enveloped rna virus that belongs to the parna virus genus of the picorna variety four well defined genome types of hiv have been described in humans yet they belong to a single serotype only the virus is stable as already told in the low low ph and in moderate temperature but it is inactivated by high temperature chlorine and formalin also prevalence if we see the or the areas which has shown dark colored they have got the high prevalence and india is uh, in the high prevalence though the recent reports are that uh, with better prevention and immunization it is 
entering into the intermediate zone so this is a good news but uh, needs to be further confirmed so what will be the course of uh, hepatitis so here the infection takes place as we have this is a very good slide which will describe everything the here the viremia takes place as we have seen in the previous slide the hepatitis a virus starts being shed in the stools and it is at this stage once the viremia has established that alt starts increasing and uh, when the alt has increased the clinical illness also shows symptomatology in the form of jaundice and other symptoms the igm also starts increasing and it is the igg which starts increasing later on prevalence as al already i told you that uh, it is a disease not only of the developing countries but also in the developed countries this is the prevalence shown in the united states of america since 2006 clinical course hiv infection in children is an acute self limited illness associated with general non specific symptoms such as fever malaise anorexia vomiting nausea abdominal pain or discomfort and diarrhea the symptoms can be 15 to 50 days after exposure average is 28 days during the prodromal period amino transferases are elevated jaundice which is a conjugated hypervolemia usually occurs one week after the onset of symptoms and along with cholurea that is bilirubin in the urine and might hepatomegaly also and what happened to the children who are below 6 years symptomatic hepatitis occurs in approximately 30% of the infected children younger than 6 years some of whom become jaundiced so point to be noted that 70% may not have the clear cut picture of jaundice jaundice usually lasts for less than 2 weeks conjugated bilirubin and amino transferases return to normal within 2 to 3 months as we have seen in the picture 8 to 12 weeks they start coming to normal and above 6 years the clinical features will be older children and adults hiv infections are usually symptomatic for several weeks hello am i audible any hello should i continue am i audible yes, yes sir. sir sir yes sir thank you approximately 70% are jaundiced in comparison to the previous slide we are below 6 years only 30% are jaundiced here they are 70% who are jaundiced 80% have hepatomegaly and 40% may need hospitalization also symptoms lasting up to even 6 months have been described so acute liver failure acute liver failure is do rare but can take place the case fatality of hiv infection varies with age in 2001 the case fatality rate was 0.3% in children younger than 14 years and 0.1% in adolescents and young adults that is 15 to 39 years acute liver failure secondary to hiv infection is more common in those with underlying liver disease such as hepatitis c wilson disease autoimmune hepatitis and hiv is responsible for less than 1% of acute liver failure cases in united states and up to 80% of liver failure in latin america or other countries in which hiv infection is endemic So this is the commonest cause of acute liver failure there can be extra hepatic manifestations also though rare 
common ones among the extrahepatic extra are evanescent maculopapular rash seen in 11% and arthralgias also in 14% cases. Much less extrahepatic manifestations can be even vasculitis, arthritis, optic neuritis, transverse myelitis, encephalitis, bone marrow suppression. HAV rarely is associated with a relapsing pattern and may trigger autoimmune hepatitis in genetically predisposed hosts. What is the Indian data? So this is a research paper of hepatitis A virus, pediatric liver disease burden and its significance in the Indian sub subcontinent. It is from the Department of Pediatric Hepatology and Clinical Virology from the Liver and Biology Mobility Sciences, New Delhi. So uh, the results we will discuss later on. Let's see what is the outcome of this pediatric hepatitis A study. There were 958 cases with acute electric illness. Out of them, 485, they were excluded who were negative for IgM HAV serology. The remaining 431, they were grouped depending on the presentation, group one with acute viral hepatitis, group two acute liver failure, and group three acute on chronic liver failure. And uh, in this group one, who were acute viral hepatitis, 41% needed the hospital admission, say 134 cases. There were complications also. The numbers are in the brackets. Prolonged cholestatic hepatitis in 66, relapsing hepatitis 25, hemolysis even without G6PD deficiency 14 cases, secondary HLH syndrome 9 cases, hemolysis with G6PD deficiency, and this is not visible to me, acute kidney injury, in six cases and acute pancreatitis even in three cases. And uh, what about the group second where the acute liver failure has taken place? It was 92 cases. 56 cases needed ICU admissions and survival without, with survival with native liver took place in 58% cases, that is 53, 28 died also, and needed liver transplantation in nine cases also. In the group three, who were acute on chronic liver failure, three cases needed, these were 13 cases, three cases needed ICU admission, three cases died, and 10 survived survival with native liver. So let us now go to the back slide, previous slide. So conclusion is HIV infection. Sometimes what happens that we see it is a mild infection. Why give this uh, vaccine? This clearly shows HIV infection is the major contributor of the overall pediatric liver disease burden. A significant proportion of subjects remain susceptible to HIV infection even after 10 years of is if vaccine is not given. Population-based studies are further required to delineate the epidemiology of HIV infection in India and to for deciding the introduction of HIV vaccine in the national immunization schedule. So clinical presentation can be asymptomatic, hepatic, or extrahepatic. In the hepatic, Typical or atypical, typical can be acute hepatitis, prodromal phase, ictric phase, and leading to recovery, acute liver failure, acute on chronic liver failure. Atypical can be prolonged cholestasis, relapsing hepatitis, biphasic illness, autoimmune hepatitis. Acute hepatitis, the prodromal or pre jaundice stage, duration two to seven days. There can be fever, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, 
pain in the right side of a brahman and loss of appetite i remember the days when i was doing house job uh, my boss took me to the surgical ward a child was admitted in the surgical ward with pain in the right side of a brahman and vomiting and uh, they, they were ready to take the child for laparotomy because ultrasound facilities were not that uh, way easily available at that time my boss asked me to look for the jaundice in the child i looked at the sclera i told the boss that there is no jaundice he asked me to take the child outside the ward in the natural light and then again see the sclera i took the child and when i examined closely in the natural light it was apparent that the child is jaundiced so that way the child was saved from a unnecessary uh, uh, laparotomy the child was shifted to the pediatric ward the urine becomes high colored and stools pale before the eyes become yellow this is during the prodromal phase ectric or jaundice this usually 7 to 14 days last at this stage there is fever nausea vomiting subside but urine continues to be high colored and stools may be pale jaundice further deepens convalescent or recovery phase 3 to 5 days jaundice decreases and clears appetite improves this is the first uh, sign symptom of uh, recovery that appetite comes improves urine becomes normal in color and stool become yellow extra hepatic can be autoimmune hemolytic anemia aplastic anemia hemolysis which can be g6pd induced pure red cell aplasia pleural or pericardial effusion acute rectal arthritis acute pancreatitis neurological complications such as mononeuritis mononeuritis multiplex and gullen barre syndrome a calculus cholecystitis and even acute kidney injury though these are rare ones management the initial goal of treatment is to establish supportive care early detection appropriate support monitoring during the acute illness recognition of the development of fulminant liver disease in the early stage and prevention of the disease spread to susceptible individuals management of hepatic encephalopathy and raised intracranial pressure if there management of associated complications and lastly liver transplantation if there is deterioration in the clinical condition we will further come to the slide where it will be shown that what can be the criteria who cases will need no specific antiviral medication is needed no dietary restrictions so this is the criteria novel bedside etiological specific prognostic model pets have in hepatitis a induced pediatric acute liver failure what will be the criteria guiding us that liver transplantation uh, is needed if the hepatic encephalopathy is to the grade of 3 to 4 inr is greater than 3.1 and especially if it is not non corrected after giving vitamin k jaundice to hepatic encephalopathy interval more than 10 days if any two of these three three criteria is fulfilled then we can say there is need of liver transplant and this criteria has got sensitivity of say 90% specificity 81% and accuracy to the tune of 85% coming to the case scenarios case 1 8 year old girl with jaundice and recurring vomiting prior to that she had low grade fever anorexia and malaise on examination when you find a ectris mild hepatomegaly but no ascites bilirubin total 8 mg percent and direct 
मैनेजमेंट स्पोर्टिव एंटीएमटिक्स एज पर नीड नो डायटरी रिस्ट्रिक्शन आउटकम रिकवर्ड एंड डिस्चार्ज नाउ वी विल डिस्कस अनदर केस टेन ईयर ओल्ड बॉय विद जॉन्डिस वॉमिटिंग एंड एक्सेसिव स्लीपीनेस प्रायर टू दैट ही हैड लो ग्रेड फीवर एंड एनरेक्सिया एंड मलेज didn't pass stools for the last 5 days on examination the child is ectric mild hepatomegaly no ascites grade 2 hepatic encephalopathy pupil 3 mm reactive no signs of raised intracranial pressure and flapping tremors also present laboratory parameters bilirubin total 12 direct 8.6 ot 2400 and pt 3600 albumin 3.2 inr 2.3 hav igm positive ultrasonography peri gall bladder edema mild ascites also present but cbt kft and electrolytes normal so if we if you remember from the previous slide this doesn't meet the criteria of liver transplant because grade Two HE only and INR two point three only. Diagnosis: Hepatitis A induced acute liver failure with grade two hepatic encephalopathy. No evidence of raised intracranial pressure. Managed with supportive treatment: lactulose, antibiotics, vitamin K, nasogastric feeding, normal diet, recovered, and discharge. Another case. A 12-year-old boy with anorexia, jaundice, vomiting, excessive sleepiness, combativeness, and also altered sensorium. On examination, the boy is ectric, petromegaly present, mild, no ascites. Here, the hepatic encephalopathy is of grade three, hypertension also present, pupils. 6 mm sluggishly reacting reflexes brisk and plantar up bilateral total bilirubin 16 direct 10.6 ot 2900 pt 3400 albumin 3 inr 5 hav igm positive cbc normal kft normal Sodium one thirty four and potassium three point one milliequivalent per liter. So if you remember the criteria, it meets the criteria. Uh, it is grade three, hepatic encephalopathy and INR more than three point one. So hepatitis A induced acute liver failure with grade three hepatic encephalopathy and raised intracranial pressure. Management supportive. lactulose nsc antibiotics vitamin k nasogastric feeding manitol 3% saline mechanical ventilation propofol outcome refer to transplant center with all transport precautions liver transplantation was done with successful outcome case 5 6 year old girl diagnosed with acute hepatitis a with no liver failure managed conservatively and discharged also now what happens on follow up she came again with rising bilirubin she has also severe pruritus which affects her sleep and daily activities also the diagnosis of acute hepatitis a with prolonged cholestasis was made peripheral film suggestive of hemolysis and some sickled rbc also hplc showed the child is sickle cell trait managed with udca cholestyramine fat soluble vitamin supplementation 
folic acid and adequate hydration outcome recovered so the learning point is we must always search for the cause of underlying hemolysis in cases of prolonged cholestasis it is not visible like thalassemia intermediate trait sickle cell uh, or g6pd deficiency so the key facts are hepatitis a is an inflammation of the liver that can cause mild to even severe illness also the hepatitis a virus is transmitted through the ingestion of contaminated food and water or through direct contact with an infectious person almost everyone recovers fully from the hepatitis a with a lifelong immunity however a very small portion of people infected with hepatitis a could even die from fulminant hepatitis the risk of hepatitis a infection is associated with lack of safe drinking water poor sanitation and poor hygiene such as contaminated and dirty hands a safe and effective vaccine is available with us to prevent hepatitis a thank you thank you subhash sir for such a simple and clear presentation regarding the uh, case wise presentation of hepatitis a and their sequelae thank you so much sir thank you thank you very much Uh, now i invite dr pinaki chakravarti uh, his dcs dnb is in charge in icu of silchar medical college assam uh, so he is going to in a brief lecture uh, about the changing hepatitis epidemiology in india dr pinaki chakravarti sir yeah i am audible and visible ha uh, yes pure uh, clearly audible and visible yeah i am uh, uh, starting my screen sharing uh, at the first very good evening to each and every one and i thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to be one of the participants and panelists in this program so a very warm greetings from assam we are having rainy season started and i feel this comfortable weather here anyway now my job after dr gupta has already discussed about the hepatitis a in detail is the clinical scenario my job is mostly on of a pediatric preventive medicine specialist uh, so what i would like to discuss about the changing epidemiology the prevalence what it has done is the change with the time about the disease now the burden of the in the community my slides are visible no no it's not visible right now so so i am starting screen sharing i think it has been un, uh, unshared by the previous speaker okay komot panel as kitaye korona dr patil sir ha uh, yes hello sir uh स्क्रीन Slide show. Okay. Deputy, she will share. You should be audible as well as visible for us. <laughs> yeah, I think I am audible and visible. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, okay. So, so what we get it uh, basically with the uh, epidemiology that is changing. What we know that around one point five million clinical cases. Uh, sir, one year. second. Sorry to interrupt, sir. One second. She had not started sharing the screen. Just one minute, sir. Okay. One minute. Okay, sir. So I have deep presentation. Can you tell me which one of the? Ma'am, second uh, presentation. Second. Okay. Okay, sir. Deputy Malaji, you just. Uh, 
bring it on the screen i will confirm it obviously the webinar today at 7:30 pm aajit ke dala apne mein today 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 aaj ye aaj aaj ye vishwas shri vast acha dono lage rahe president ke liye puri puri taakat ye hamare haath mein nahi ye zyada important webinar hai jisko bhi akal hogi wo isko sunega jo intelligent hai no 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 this is not no 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 सेकंड बाय डॉक्टर जीवी बसवराजा हाँ दिस वन दिस वन इसके बाद वाला ओके ओके या या शुरू आई विल कंप्लीट दिस ब्लड डायग्नोसिस है ट्रीटमेंट है काफी कॉम्प्लिकेशंस है प्रिवेंशन है फुल आधे घंटे गए वो साढ़े आठ से वो भी खत्म हो जाएगा रवि शंकर का है उसके बाद कम हो गया नो थे Dr. Patil, can I be discussing? I think by the time the sharing is started. Uh, she started, sir. Just hardly ten okay. seconds till okay. the fire. They started screen sharing. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, now so, that you can go ahead. Yeah. So this around one point five million cases worldwide have been reported for hepatitis A, and still. many of them are under reported because we know jaundice by the time the my previous speaker has uh, already described some of the symptoms may not be tell tell jaundice and this is a scenario cases where we get lots of treatment at the domiciliary level where there is under reporting of the cases so this is always under reported and what the data we get is tip of the iceberg so this is a big problem and the global burden of the disease is study estimated that acute hepatitis a infections decreased by 4.2% between 2005 and 50 but who estimates in 2016 the death is 7134 persons who died from hepatitis a worldwide so the mortality due to viral hepatitis a which should not have been still prevalent next please so uh, worldwide incidence of uh, 1.5 million uh, that we already discussed but the fulminant hepatic failure is an uncommon complication and that is the reason most of the cases the reporting is less and people take some form of treatment which may be scientific or unscientific and they report less so still the fact that in northern european countries 20% of cases of fulminant viral hepatitis is due to hepatitis a acute hepatitis or fulminant hepatic failure also increases with age so if we get the cases in the older age group they are more supposed to be serious enough and can rise to give rise to the fulminant hepatic failure next please next so this is the geographical distribution what we got that the red areas are the highly endemic areas and by high endemicity what did we get that there is high prevalence we get more than 90% will have immunity by the age of 10 years so india as we can clearly see india is marked very red in this graph and here what is been geographical distribution that they have immunity by the age of 
and before the hepatitis a vaccination came there was always the contaminated uh, food and water used to give some degree of immunity to the children and this happened to be one of the reasons that people used to overlook the disease the low prevalence areas is around 50% have the immunity by the age of 30 years so next please so this shows the global burden this shows the global burden so by low endemicity we mean less than 50% will be sero positive that is nt hab that is the igg in the serum if we see the prevalence so this will be less than 15% will be low 15 to 5050 will be intermediate and if it is more than 50% that will be high endemic so now the problem is india has got the pockets of low in endemicity intermediate as well as high and there is an epidemiological shift from high endemicity to intermediate endemicity as the hygiene level is better than the earlier days in countries southeast asian countries next next please so this is the highly endemic areas the southeast asia as you know the so called third world countries we are having a highly endemic areas so also is africa in china and india being the two most populous countries in the world that have been shown to a very rapid socio economic development and this is the high endemic areas for coexist with others making transition to moderate incidence that is as we have discussed that there is epidemiological shift to the moderate from the higher one next please next so number of hepatitis cases reported that is a bar diagram of what we got that if we see the total hepatitis cases then the tested so, so this has been clearly showed that what we see from this 2011 to 2013 so the positive cases for hepatitis e and hepatitis a that has been compared so this is a diagram that shows that uh, from how it has been because we know that both these are the fecal oral route of transmission and both are essentially can cause like to occasionally fulminant hepatic failure next so this is again a pictorial showing the laboratory confirms of hepatitis a and e cases so total number of hepatitis cases reported that has been shown if we see here so what we get from the dotted line that the laboratory confirmed cases they have been shown in the dotted line so what we get that it has been maintained so rows that uh, this is uh, this survival shows that there is maintenance of the average endemicity is being always the number of cases the disease burden is not coming down suddenly so both in main mostly in the cases of hepatitis a that we are getting from the dotted lines next please so reservoir of the humans as we know this is a fecal oral route of transmission average the communicability or the incubation period is 2 weeks but it may last up to 50 days so average it is 2 weeks and it is basically a fecal oral route of transmission next yeah so this is the vaccine development therapy they have shown the trend in the epidemiological shift there is epidemiological shift from the high to intermediate hepatitis a that is evident from the decreasing number of adolescents and young adults with prior exposure hepatitis a remains highly endemic in the rural areas because of the poor sanitation still taking of the river water and this is the reason that there are the potential sources of infection and these are the areas these are the pockets of high endemicity where there can be sudden outbreak and that give rise to a epidemic and give rise to an epidemic also in future and as there is demographic shift also to older population so as we know that this will be more complicated as they are older age group with hepatitis a so more hospitalizations more fulminant hepatic failure and that in the adolescents and adults than the children so these are the two very essential points for the take home from the epidemiological shift we can get and we are getting in india now there is a need for long term protection and that is possible not only by improving the hygiene 
but also essential is to get the children vaccinated against hepatitis A. Next. So this is, uh, as we have discussed, there is a shifting epidemiological shift from the high to intermediate zone. So this is typically in the urban populations we have discussed. I'm not going into the numbers, but this is the basic message. And this is the reason that we should be more cautious. The urban population are getting more uh, hygienic, more knowledgeable, and the quality of life is getting increased. The prevalence of anti-HAP antibodies is lower in adolescents and young adults. And but we get that around 80% in Bangladesh, so it will be there. Next. So this is uh, the graph, uh, not a very significant. We can go ahead with that. Next graph. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, so what we get that what is the mode of uh, mode of uh, communication that is the what uh, that is the specific we get. Uh, yeah, so what we get that the outbreaks in the worldwide from 2009, if it is found that there will be some uh, specific points that what should be the specific modes of transmission, though some uh, sexual routes of transmission have been discussed, but it is not very essential for practical purposes of you. Next. Okay, so what we got that as per the studies in the BPSU, so what we got that 27%, uh, 27, that is 39% were hepatitis A positive, 4% were only B, uh, hepatitis B, uh, HIV with 39 and uh, 16 were other viruses that were uh, in the previous studies, they were hospitalized hepatitis uh, a virus cases, 70% have traveled uh, abroad, only 8% have been vaccinated. So the vaccinated incidence for the number of keys vaccinated for hepatitis A had been very less. And this is one of the reasons that we are still getting the cases of adolescents or adults with fulminant hepatic failure. Next. So what do we get? So basically, the two thirds of the outbreaks of hepatitis are from the rural areas, and these outbreaks are suddenly can become severe enough. And outbreaks with known etiology are by hepatitis A, sometimes A and E coexist, or sometimes we cannot be able to detect by the seroprevalence because these serological diagnoses are not always widely available in government setups with the E A and E, and this is a problem that uh, these outbreaks have occurred. So these are 2002 and four, we find six outbreaks in the semi-urban and rural areas. In 2004 in Kerala also, 2007 in Simla. So that shows that the trend is still continuing. Now, what are the facts of hepatitis A? Next, please. So as we, next. So as we know that there is a fecal route of transmission, this is the first show that liver, it will be going into the GI tract, it wants it enters into the mouth and it, uh, the target is an uh, hepatotrophic virus that needs some several weeks and can be debilitating. But most of the cases, uh, there is a complete recovery. Now, preventable with careful hand washing, keeping toilet, bathrooms clean, as we know, it is a fecal oral route of transmission. Now, what was the common mode of presentation? Nausea, refractory nausea, and vomiting. Many of the cases, the kids come in the pre icteric phase. When there is nausea and vomiting, Dr. Gupta was discussing about the clinical diagnosis of jaundice by examining the sclera nicely. As we teach in the clinics that it may not be possible in unnatural light. Sometimes it is very light or it is pre-icteric phases, then only the vomiting and nausea may be there. But telltale signs with tender soft hepatomegaly with the features of jaundice, obviously, or rarely with the extra hepatic manifestations. Now, the spread is all known, and the prevention by the hygienic as well as the vaccine part is all known about the hepatitis. Next, please. These are the symptoms we have all known right from pre -teric with mild jaundice or mild yellowish discoloration to severe with a dark color urine, if there is definite cholestasis, 
So definitely we get that echolic or lightly clay colored stool, light colored stools are common, pain abdomen, vomiting, and loss of appetite. As we tell that appetite is the index of liver, so loss of appetite with refractory vomiting should arouse suspicion and has to be there. So the incubation period and others we have discussed, the basic message is, again, right from asymptomatic infection, it can go up to the severe infection or till the fulminant hepatic failure stage. Next, please. Next. So what are the factors that is the seroprevalence and the determining factors for each center? So this is a, the, uh, the variables that have been shown here that what factors affecting the seroprevalence because the age and gender. So the place of the residence, the education level, all these things matter because of the quality of life the person or the people are cherishing. As we go into the rural areas, the quality of life where the hygiene, education level, socioeconomic status, all are in the negative side still now in India. So there is obviously, we get that there can be significantly uh, positive cases we can get. Next please. So this is a very nice picture that shows the zigzag path as it results completely in 99% of cases. Relapses are rare, three to 20% cases. So what we get basically in hepatitis, it is somewhat what we got somewhat like in COVID. So recovery rate is very good. Many cases are underreported and underdiagnosed. Once clinical detection, many of the cases the recovery is very high. But yes, there is an epidemiological shift towards the older age group. So there is high chances of complications. That is the point where we should act by vaccinating the cure kids beyond infancy. The case fatality ratio that has been shown here. So higher the age group, we get an increasing case fatality. Next, please. So seroprevalence study of hepatitis A virus antibody that has been a study taken over and it has again come in the vaccine. So this is uh, outcome. So it also again shows that uh, if we go into the data that, uh, that Indian population, the same data, the same data is being uh, suggested that there is a trend as we have discussed that we go into the higher age group. Next, please. So this is the age-wise distribution, age-specific prevalence. So this is again a bar diagram showing the age-specific prevalence and the anti-hep positivity. So what we get, if we go into the uh, total number of cases, the moment we go into the uh, lower age group, so anti-hep positivity will be increasing into the uh, this age group so once we are increasing with that. So 60.9, that is the upper part of this uh, nine to 10 years groups we are getting. So anti-HAB positivity is increasing with the age specific. Next. So the changing epidemiology, very essential is that we are getting the epidemics risk reduced. This is a very nice uh, cycle of what we get in the wheels of the curves or the bikes, what we get. One is locked with the other with the gear. So this what necessarily shows that even if the severity and these three, what we get, there is epidemics risk will be coming less, but the large pockets of the susceptible or older children, there are large pockets of the high risk population. And as the severity is depending on the age, so if we can uh, get them protected in the earlier age group, obviously the risk of epidemics comes down. So that is the most essential part. And that can be achieved only through a specific vaccination. And that should be available to each and every kid of India. So this is a very essential message. India currently has, as I have already discussed earlier, that it has got high endemicity and low endemicity. And there is a risk of hepatitis A in older children and adults an exposure in the low endemic population that can suddenly lead to an outbreak 
and always an outbreak is very dangerous to control and it can give rise to morbidity as well as mortality. Next. So this predominant in the Asian subcontinent, again, I told you, this is my uh, uh, community medicine or community pediatrics type. So what we have that the prevalence of hepatitis A infection has increased by 4.2% from between 2005 to 2015, but have infections often self-limiting in children. And as we know, fatal cases have been reported. So in the adolescent, if we're going to adolescent counseling, this is very essential. Whenever they come with hepatitis, they try to ignore it by their age group, but it can land up in sudden hepatic failure or it can lead to hepatic encephalopathy too. So this is very essential. And India is in the red zone. That is anti-HIV prevalence also shows India is in the red zone. That is another message, though these are community pediatrics related slides, may not be very attractive, but what I said, so red marks for India is a warning sign that anytime an outbreak can take place. And then it will be difficult because we know once the NCAF develops beyond stage one, it is difficult to take care of the kids and bring it to the complete recovery. Next, please. Next. So how we can uh, help it? Basically, this epidemiological shift, what it is showing here. So how we can help it? That due to significant socioeconomic development, what has improved the standard living condition, standard the hygienic conditions. So this has improved that what we get, this, these are the, again, the bar diagrams that are showing that the, around 20% decrease in the anti hate seropositivity. This has been noted over 10 years in the children is less than 10 years. So this is a very essential part because once we are increasing the level of the hygiene, we can do it. Presently, the age acquiring the hepatitis A virus is shifting from early childhood to the adolescence of the younger adults. And that is a problematic for us because we know that we are making a demographic shift and this demographic shift has led to the, those group of population getting infected where the risk of fatality is higher. In India, prevalence of anti-hepatitis A virus antibodies in adolescents is reported to be 55%. So that is a very essential problem for us. We have to be careful about it. Next. Next, please. Yeah, so this is a 3.54 increase in the incidence of acute hepatitis A. So what we got in the adolescents, so from 1999, so percentage of cases in acute hepatitis due to have in the adolescence. So what we got that in 2003, we got that there is a increase in this. This is very essential point for us because this is showing an epidemiological shift and this is a warning message that we want to prevent it. So next please. So this is what everyone wants. The receptors in the tongue want the taste bus wants. So enjoying the food, enjoying the outside food, and more often the children and adolescents with the pressure of media and this. But what is the hygiene level? What is the hygiene level? The hygiene level in India, we all know. Not only the food sellers, the vendors, the cooks, neither they are deworm nor they are vaccinated. The water is contaminated in most of the cases. So if one has to have those Indian street food wants to enjoy, then one needs the prevention. And this prevention is by hepatitis A vaccination. Next, please. So next. So how to prevent apart from the hygiene is by the hepatitis A vaccination. We all know beyond infancy, the birthday gift we can give to any child who will be needing their food is by a hepatitis A vaccination. It is indicated on the basis of the incidence of hepatitis A change in the endemicity from the higher to the intermediate. The cost effectiveness and the vaccine will be discussed by the next speaker. Countries with improving socioeconomic status may rapidly move from the high to the intermediate hepatic endemicity. And this country is relatively large population of the adult population. So it is essential that we vaccinate, we vaccinate in the lower age group only. 
And this will be very essential once we vaccinate this age group. So the message we want to give that a relatively large proportion of the adult population will be susceptible to the virus. And India has currently the pockets of high endemicity as well as low endemicity. So risk of the hepatitis A older children and adults is relatively higher than what we had earlier. As we know that this age group is more susceptible to the complications, so we have more risk of complicated hepatitis A now in the older age group than what we got earlier. That has to be eradicated from the minds of the common people. That pilia is not always very simple. So exposure in the low endemic population and can lead to sudden outbreak and that. So that is very essential. So this is an essential message. Next, please. So this is my penultimate slide. The message I have given that vaccination against hepatitis A is effective. Whether we go for live vaccine or kill vaccine will be discussed by the next speaker. It is effective. We should endorse for as the birthday gift to every Indian kid. Thank you. Next, thank you. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you, Dr. Pinaki, for such an eye opening review about the changing epidemiology in India, uh, especially the changing pattern from child to adolescent and adult uh, age group and from the rural to urban area. Uh, such a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. So now I uh, like to introduce Dr. Gunjan, Dr. Gunjan Bajar, and she is MD, uh, MRCPH, and consultant pediatrician at JP Medical Center, Chandigarh. So, back to Dr. Gunjan, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Bhaskar Shinoy, Dr. Uh, Sachin Patil for giving me this opportunity along with the local uh, organizers. So I'm just sharing the screen. Is it uh, good? Yes, ma'am. Ah, yes. So after the basics and the epidemiology and prevention, now we'll, I'll be talking on diagnosis and management of hepatitis A and um, on acute liver failure. Just for the introduction, uh, we've already discussed hepatitis A virus infection is a self-limiting infection. The average incubation period is around 30 days, ranging from 15 to 50 days. Mostly more than 70% of the children uh, are asymptomatic and uh, hepatitis A does not usually cause chronic disease. The diagnosis would be a uh, liver function test including the serum bilirubin. SGOTPT liver enzymes would be more around 4 to 100 times of the upper uh, limit. So they will be highly raised and PTINR uh, is usually important for the prognostication of the disease. So for confirmation antibodies are done anti HAV IgM, which appears around uh, 5 to 10 days after the symptom onset, may persist for around 4 months, may be false negative in the early phases. So, this is the antibodies we do in the initial as the graph uh, we can see. So, uh, IgM would be raised and acute infection we can come to know, while IgG tend to rise later but persist for a longer duration. May signify past infection or post-vaccination status. So, in an acute illness, IgM would only hold importance. So, ultrasound, uh, uh, it's not usually recommended. It's not usually uh, routinely done. Though it may have done, it may show the following transient changes. Uh, Hepatosplenomegaly will be there. There may be gallbladder wall thickening, sludge and GB, contracted gallbladder. Potahepatic lymph nodes may be there, all subcentric, discrete, oval, isohypoic may be present. So, poriportal cuffing, that is increased brightness and clear visualization of the portal vein, radical walls may be there. So, as a routine, we should never get an ultrasound done when we are suspecting. But if for any reason it is done, these may be the changes which, which are there. And these are transient changes. Usually, they subside later. 
may identify underlying chronic liver disease also. So uh, coming to the treatment, there is no specific treatment for hepatitis A. Recovery from symptoms following infection may be slow and can take several weeks or months. So unnecessary medication should always be avoided like um, paracetamol or acetaminophen. Uh, hospitalization is also unnecessary in the absence of acute liver failure. So any child uh, with uh, suspecting hepatitis A viral disease should not be admitted unless there are signs of liver failure or other uh, symptoms suggesting the treatment for the symptomatic relief. Therapy is aimed at maintaining comfort and adequate nutrition, including replacement of fluids that are lost from vomiting and diarrhea. So as discussed, management in the supportive care would include adequate hydration, adequate nutritional support, Antiemetics for severe vomitings or PPIs may be used. Antibiotics for high fever may be used. Choleritic agents like UDCA may be used for pruritus. So for the monitoring purposes, INR may be done. And follow-up of liver enzymes should be done at four to six weeks later. A daily or alternate day enzymes should not be checked unless there are complications or acute liver failure suspected. So uh, now coming to the acute liver failure, as per the definition, um, it has been defined in an infant or child as the following criteria. There is no known evidence of chronic liver disease. So biochemical evidence of acute liver injury and corrected that is six hours post 10 milligram dose of parenteral vitamin K coagulopathy defined as uh, INR of more than equal to 1.5 in the presence of clinical hepatic encephalopathy or INR of more than 2 regardless of the presence or absence of clinical hepatic encephalopathy. So with these criteria, any child um, who has come with viral hepatitis and fitting into these criteria with no prior history of chronic liver disease uh, will be uh, under acute liver failure. So etiology, the most common one, as uh, we are discussing, acute viral hepatitis. Hepatitis A virus is the most common cause in Asia. Though the complication as such is rare, but still the uh, etiology of hepatitis A virus remains high. The other causes may be indeterminate, drug-induced liver injury, Wilson's disease, autoimmune hepatitis. And mortality may range from somewhere 25 to 49%, so which is quite high. So uh, this was a profile and outcome of first few cases of pediatric acute liver failure at a specialized pediatric liver unit in India. So in this, um, they had uh, categorized as per the etiology uh, into viral, indeterminate, drug-induced, metabolic liver disease, and some other causes. So, uh, jaundice to encephalopathy period was around 0 to 120 days. Hepatic encephalopathy was very high, 88.9% in them. So, most common etiology was viral infections, uh, next being metabolic and then drug-induced liver injury. So, there was a poor outcome if the child had high uh, ELT or MELD at 72 hours or J interval more than 7 days. So, uh, as seen the etiology, in the viral, 31, of, uh, 31 of the patients survived of the total and while 11 of them died and 8 had to undergo liver transplant. So, likewise in the indeterminate, there was a high mortality of 13 uh, children dying. Drug induced, the survival was uh, quite high, 10 out of the 12 children survived while 2 died and others metabolic and others, there were um, 8, 8 deaths while the others survived and 3 and 2 had to undergo liver transplantation. So when uh, coming to the evaluation of a child to identify the etiology and severity, history is always important. So time of onset of symptoms, mental status, identify viral hepatitis like prodrome, fever, etc. Uh, take the history of those. Any history of blood transfusion uh, in the past use of any hepatotoxic medications, family history of Wilson's disease, infectious hepatitis, infant deaths or autoimmune conditions, identify any chronic liver disease, 
pruritus, ascites, or growth failure may be the symptoms present in chronic liver disease. In neonates, identify congenital infection or metabolic liver disease. So coming to the examination, evaluation of growth and development and nutritional status uh, is always important. Evidence of coagulopathy should be looked for. Assess severity by uh, jaundice, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, ascites, and edema may be present. Evidence of hepatic encephalopathy. Findings suggestive of chronic liver disease should be looked for, like features of portal hypertension and slit lamp examination if um, you are an uh, expert in that, or the optical uh, consultation should be done for KF ring. So after the examination, laboratory investigation, in which the aim is to assess the degree of inflammation, injury, and function, and to guide transplant decisions. For this, a complete LFT coagulogram, so serum ammonia, CBC, renal function test, uh, electrolytes, etiological investigations, depending on the history and examination, should all be done. I'll be discussing these investigations um, in the treatment also. So specific investigations like for infectious causes, we have seen IgM antibodies for hepatitis A, E, B, surface antigen for B, or um, CMB, PCR, IgM, varicella, zoster virus, IgM, EB virus, and HIV 1 and 2 should be done. To rule out uh, Wilson's disease, if suspecting, ceruloplasmin and 24-hour urine copper should be done, and KF ring should be looked for. For autoimmune hepatitis, Combs test, anti-nuclear antibody, liver, kidney, microsomal antibody, smooth muscle antibodies, and immunoglobulin G level should be done. Hemato, hemophagocytosis um, in that uh, triglyceride levels, cholesterol, ferritin, and bone marrow biopsy should be done. Drug overdose should always be considered, and um, estaminophen and valproate drug levels should be done if history is suggesting for the same. So treatment, again, the initial would be stabilization and support. A central venous line and volume resuscitation should be carried out if necessary. glucose based fluid should be given preferably. Vasoactive drugs should be used if hypotension is unresponsive to saline. If sedation is mandatory, propofol of 1 to 2 mg per kg can be given. And acetylcysteine infusion uh, should be started and routinely used doses 100 mg per kg per day in all cases of acute liver failure, irrespective of the etiology. Prophylactic administration of PPIs should be started. L-ornithine and L-aspartate are not beneficial and should not be started. Lactulose and other non-absorbable antibiotics like rifeximine are helpful in hepatic and keflopathy. So monitoring whenever a child is admitted will include vitals, neurological status and liver span, continuous oxygen, saturation monitoring, urine output, bowel habits, ABGs, blood sugar, prothrombin time, 12 hourly, these should be done and weekly liver and renal function tests should be done. So specific treatment for these would be uh, electrolyte disturbances should be treated, any uh, sodium, potassium, any of these should be corrected as per the protocol. Raised intracranial pressure may occur in severe encephalopathy in 3% saline infusion to maintain sodium at 145 to 155 millimoles per liter. Obvious neurological signs of increased uh, intracranial pressure of more than 25 millimeter mercury, IV mannitol can be given, bolus over 15 minutes with urine output monitoring, hyperventilation with reduction of PCO2 less than 35 per millimeter mercury if mannitol therapy fails can be used. And hypothermia, prophylactic phenytoin or steroids are uh, been shown to have no role and should not be used. So uh, coming to the specific management of coagulopathy, vitamin K 5 to 10 milligram is empirically given in all patients. FFP replacement, clinically significant bleeding if present, invasive procedures or extreme coagulopathy of INR more than seven should be uh, done. Cryoprecipitate um, in case hypofibrinogenia of less than 10 milligram per deciliter. Recombinant factor 7A, if prolonged INR with volume overload, platelet, platelet transfusion in case there is severe thrombocytopenia or significant bleeding. 
So sepsis remains the major cause of death in all the patients. And gram-positive cocaine and enteric gram-negative bacilli should be uh, treated as per the protocols. Routine use of antibiotic prophylaxis in all patients with uh, acute liver failure is not recommended. Empirical administration of antibiotic, if there is likelihood of impending sepsis, it's very high, can be used. And third generation cephalosporins, vancomycin, etc. can be used as per the protocol. Acute kidney injury, renal replacement therapy should be given if uh, severe or persistent hyperkalemia is there. Uremic and cephalopathy is there. Fluid overload with pulmonary edema, severe hypertension, severe metabolic acidosis, hyponatremia or hypernatremia, and peritoneal dialysis if the child is sick and unstable, particularly infants, it can be used. So liver transplant remains a very important treatment in the management of acute liver failure. And there are certain criteria, King's College Hospital criteria and pediatric end-stage liver disease, uh, which are used to categorize a child. So list of um, this liver transplant, if an, an uh, INR of more than four, or factor five concentration of less than 25 is there. So indications of liver transplant in hepatitis A per se would be if there is deterioration in the clinical condition and no improvement with supportive treatment, grade three or four hepatic encephalopathy with no improvement with conservative management and uh, King's College hospital criteria are the most commonly used in which it has a poor sensitivity of 61% and specificity of 70% in non-paracetamol acute liver failure cohort. And in these, if prothrombin time is more than 100 seconds, that is INR more than 6.5, irrespective of grade of encephalopathy or any of the three, like if the child baby is less than 10 years or more than 40 years, cause a non-A, non-B hepatitis, drug-induced or idiosyncratic reaction, Duration of jaundice before onset of encephalopathy is more than seven days or prothrombin time is more than 50 seconds, INR 3.5. Serum bilirubin 17.6 or more than 300 millimoles. So any of these three criteria or the prothrombin time more than 100 uh, will fit into this. Non, uh, this is not HIV specific. So after the treatment and the discussion on uh, this, we'll just discuss few cases. A uh, seven-year-old boy who presented with fever, anorexia, jaundice, and altered sleep cycle. On examination, had ictris, mild hepatomegaly, no ascites, grade one hepatic encephalopathy, and outside managed and referred with cola-colored urine and oliguria. So lab parameters done showed bilirubin of eight with the direct fraction of 5.6. OTPT were raised in thousands. Albumin 3.4, INR 2.3. HAV IgM was positive. An ultrasound showed peri gallbladder edema. Hemoglobin was 5. A TLC 45,000. Serum uh, heptoglobin was low. G6PD deficiency was there. And PBF was suggestive of hemolysis. Urea 89 and creatinine 1.3. So this is the case of acute hepatitis A with G6PD deficiency induced hemolysis. So in this case, management would remain uh, supportive and hydration, G6PD safe drugs had to be used. This child was uh, recovered and discharged home. So there is a uh, severe pruritus present and management would include a uh, start uh, UDCA with 20 to 30 milligram per kg per day, plus you may or may not use cholesteramine from 200 to 300 milligram per kg per day. If there is no response in four weeks, add on rifampicin. Again, no response, add on naltrexone. No response in for another four weeks, add on ondansetron. Uh, so the use of these drugs should be in disorders. Also, at some point, you can consider using antihistamines like citrazine and hydroxyzine. So another case of nine-year-old girl with jaundice, vomiting and anorexia. On examination, she had ictris, mild hepatomegaly, but no signs of hepatic encephalopathy. So bilirubin was 6 and direct 3.6. OTPT was again in thousands. Albumin 3.8. INR was 1.3. Hepatitis A IgM was positive. And ultrasound showed peri-GB edema, CBC, KFT, electrolytes were all within uh, normal limits. 
So commonly seen case and management would remain supportive, no dietary restriction and outcome was this child was discharged. But on follow up at three weeks, she came with pallor and petechi all over body with fever, had severe pallor, petechi, no hepatosplenomegaly. So here she had severe anemia 4.6, normocytic, normochromic, corrected retic count of 0.4 and TLC uh, 1300. ANC 500, platelets 2600. So all three cell lines were decreased. So DCT was negative, uh, HPLC was normal, ANA and all these antibodies were negative. Hepatitis B, surface antigen, HCV, hepatitis E, Epstein Barr, PCR uh, and CMV, IgM, PCR, parvovirus, dengue, dengue serology, and uh, all these were negative. So bone marrow showed hypocellular marrow less than 5% replaced by fatty spaces. So this was the case of hepatitis A associated aplastic anemia. Management initially managed conservatively with PRBC and platelet transfusions along with antibiotics. Later on, no improvement. She was started on cyclosporin under expert hematologist. So at this point, we have to take a second opinion and refer a child appropriately. Though this child recovered completely after four weeks. Some of the patients might require hematopoietic stem cell transplantation and long-term follow-up is always necessary. So another case, eight-year-old girl came with jaundice and ascites with no signs of hepatic uh, encephalopathy. Examination showed pallor and ictus, firm hepatomegaly with splenomegaly and free fluid was present. So labs showed uh, hemoglobin of 6, normocytic, retic 5.6%, DCT negative, uh, bilirubin total of 8 and direct fraction 5.6. OTPT was raised in 600 and 500. And alkaline phosphate is 67. Albumin 2.3 and INR was 2.6. So ultrasound uh, showed signs of chronic liver disease, portal hypertension, moderate ascites. Hepatitis A IgM was again positive. But this child, when um, further uh, investigated, showed low ceruloplasmin and 24 um, R-urine copper was 245. So KF ring was also present. This was the case of acute on chronic liver failure. So whenever we are uh, investigating any child and there are some uh, other markers present, we should always look on for acute on chronic. And Wilson's disease, acute was uh, hepatitis A. Management was supportive, lactulose and d penicillin and zinc acetate specifically for Wilson's was started. This child also recovered and discharged on regular follow-up now. So prognosis, um, poor survival in uh, more than 50% of children. So better prognosis of acute liver failure in hepatitis A, acetaminophen overdose and ischemia. And poor prognosis in um, drug-induced hepatitis B and indeterminate cases. So prevention, as we have seen before, also would always remain improved sanitation, food safety and immunization remains the most important effective way to combat hepatitis A. Spread of hepatitis A can be reduced by adequate supply of safe drinking water, proper disposal of uh, sewage within communities, and personal hygiene practices such as regular hand washing before meals and after going to the washrooms. Hepatitis A vaccines remain the important preventive me method and will be discussed in detail in the next talk. So the take-home messages would be, most of the hepatitis A virus infection is self-limiting. All patients infected with the acute viral hepatitis should be followed up for the normalization of the liver enzymes. Hepatitis A virus is the most common cause of acute liver failure in children in Asia. And patients of acute liver failure should be closely monitored and referred as soon as possible for the liver transplantation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Gunjan. I don't have words for your such a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Sir. Regarding about the diagnosis, treatment schedule of hepatitis A, along with the uh, HE or non-HE. So very nice. Thank you so much. So Thank now I am going to invite Dr. R.K. Gupta, sir. Uh, Dr. R.K. Gupta Hello, is MDFIAP. He <coughs> is a senior professor of uh, pediatrics medicine at SMS Medical College, Japur and having 25 years of uh, postgraduate teaching experience. 
and dr gupta has published more than 45 papers in all the medical journals so i invite dr rk gupta sir regarding hepatitis a vaccine rk gupta sir please thank you dr vajpayee sir thank you for giving me the opportunity and i'm highly thankful to dr bhaskar shinoy and dr sk patel sahab for giving me the opportunity and uh, also thankful to dr gunjan for her very nice talk and dr pinaki for excellent talk about the hepatitis a and all the office bearers uh, may i uh, share a screen so we'll be discussing about clinical studies of live attenuated hepatitis a vaccine in children live attenuated hepatitis a vaccine highlight the points are simulates natural infection produce a complex immune response that is tumoral as well as cellular and it is licensed over the age of 1 year and only single dose that is again subcutaneous less painful and freeze dried so that contains diagnostic or 6.5 tcid and same dose for adults and children pseudo conversion with live attenuated hepatitis hepatitis a vaccine there are so many studies but the initial study was in 1990 from china jang s that they studied 3000 candidates 4 to 27 years in three batches and the zero conversion occurred at mean time of 2 to 5 weeks after inoculation and zero positivity was 95% so uh, around 32 years back when the initial studies on this vaccine were done the zero conversion was 95% and no local or systemic reactions during 42 days follow that is again very important even zero enzymes were is in the normal range then the second study which was done uh at the almost same time that was done in 19 i published in 1992 by cheng nl from the uh, that again from china at that time they studied 11451 healthy adults in three batches and the zero conversion was 92% so it was 3000 here it was 11000 and in one of the earliest human trials in a small sample size the conversion was 100% so that is very important so it's 90 to 100% zero conversion and uh, this is another study in 1997 which showed the protective efficacy and for this protective efficacy four year long study was done in 11 primary schools in the shaojing county of china in 6000 children and 18102 cumulative person years in vaccinated group while 242000 cumulative person years in control group now you see the vaccinated group 18000 cumulative person years no case of hepatitis a while in the control group there were around 500 cases of hepatitis so you can see the how much protective this vaccine is so in another study a large scale vaccination was done with vaccine coverage of 89% in children 1 to 15 years and before this vaccination 12 to 87 cases were per annum seen in that city of hepatitis a 12 to 87 average 30 but after vaccination and the coverage was 89% you can see that only 6 cases occurred over the period of 6 years 91 to 95 5 years and all six were non vaccinated cases out of these 10% cases only six were uh, became uh, hepatitis a positive so that shows that the protective efficacy is very good excellent protective efficacy and this is a study done in our india and i published in 2014 by dr sheila bhave et al from pune basically the study was in calcutta and pune and open level evaluation of immunogenicity and safe biovac a in healthy children and 137 children were evaluated 1 to 12 years and 8 weeks zero conversion was seen in the kolkata group 100% pune group 98% overall 99% so a single dose of live attenuated hepatitis a vaccine produced an excellent zero conversion and had a good tolerability profile so this was a bridging study 
And the another study which pub was published in 2015 by Mitra et al. from Calcutta basically, and that was conducted in four centers: New Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, and Calcutta. It's a multi-centric, non-comparative, non-randomized, open confirmatory trial. 343 children were included, and five years followed up. And you can see up to five years, the zero conversion was 95, 97, 98, 96, 97, 97. So above 95% zero conversion was persisted up to five years of the study period. And the GMP 20 IU is the cutoff. And here you can see six weeks around 65, and it reached to around 120 plus most of the time. Uh, during the follow-up period of five years. So very nice GMT was achieved. So good zero conversion and good zero protection with a very high GMT titers. This is another study published in by Sheila Bhave et al. by evaluation of immunogenicity and tolerability of a live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine in Indian children. The study design was single center, non-randomized open confirmatory trial and children received one dose of hepatitis A, a vaccine, and 121 children were evaluated at 10 years and 115 at 12 years. And you can see the zero protection was 77, 86, 7 percent in 2014. And to our surprise, reduced to 77, but again rose to 87 percent after the gap of four years. And the mean title was well above the cutoffs 111, 66, 110, while the cutoff is only 20. So you can see the good geometric mean titers and very high zero protection in various Indian studies also. And even after the end of 10 years, very good zero protection and very high GMT titers. So long term immunogenicity of single dose of live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine in Indian children results of 15 year follow. That was 12 years, now it is 15 years, 109 children, they completed 15 years follow-up. And uh, the zero protection was 86% after the 15 years. You can see 86% had zero conversion and GMT was 79. So it's very good after 15 years. Not a single case of hepatitis A infection occurred in 15 years in the study subjects. Revelation of tolerability of a live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine in India, where it was published in 2006 in Indian pediatrics, no immediate or delayed reaction and no serious adverse events. There are two important things. No immediate reaction, no delayed reaction, no serious adverse events. Neumatological and biochemical parameters at baseline and at the end of trial were evaluated. And there were, you can see hemoglobin 12, 11.7, 10, 10.3, 371, 338, AST, ALT, okay, bilirubin, okay. So no significant change. So there was no change in the biochemical and hematological parameters. Immune protective effectiveness of live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine in the 15 year follow up, you can see the very high zero conversion or very good GMT levels. And this was Chinese study done by Zhuang FC and published in 2010. There also there were 15 years follow up. And after inoculating a live hepatitis A vaccine in Jiojiang district, immune barrier was set. That is again important. So that's why I told you that it has got a very uh, nice, very good uh, zero protection and immune protection by involvement of both cellular and humoral immunity. And it forms the immune barrier. So it decreased to 96% morbidity all the inoculated people did not occur hepatitis A, so double protection. So you can see, so it leads to heart defect also. So immunogenicity after 15 years, that's very high zero protection and very high GMT titers and immune memory at 17 years of follow. -up. That is again very important. That is recently published in 2017 from China. So you can see that to assess the duration of characteristics, study cohort was 3,515 HAV susceptible children. Single dose of hepatitis A was given randomly to some children and some as control. And then without either natural infection or vaccine boosters were selected as participants and a booster dose of hepatitis A vaccine was administered to each participant immediately after collection of a blood sample and second blood sample was obtained two weeks after the booster. So hepatitis A 
virus susceptible children were chosen between the age of 8 to 1 to 12 years between 1996 to 1999 and they were given single dose of hepatitis a vaccine or nothing as cut and after gap of 17 years they were classified into two parts the whether they had hepatitis a infection or vaccine booster or not then they were again sent, seen that whether the antibody is positive or not, and then the booster was given, and then you can see the results. So required level of zero protection is 20 milli unit per ml. Antibody titers and GMT will start falling after some period in any vaccine or infection. After long duration, what is the actual clinical effectiveness of live vaccine in real time scenario? And to see what if the GMT titers are below recommended levels of 20. Anti HIV negative were those subjects with the GMT less than 20 after 17 years. Anti HIV positive GMT more than 20 after 17 years. Now see the groups. Anti HIV negative less than 20 titer were 18, and anti HIV positive were 29. So they were basically 66% male, 75% male. Age after at the initial injection 3.7, 3.7. So age and sex based uh, groups. And the HIV table was 7.6, here it was 64.8. Out of these 18, 13 were inoculated as the booster. And again, the 69% were male, and here the 14 were 18 were given. And the age at initial injection in this group, a 13 group was 3.9, and it is 4.1, it is almost same. So anti-HIV level, you can see the rise. It rose to around uh, 80 times. 8 to 661 after giving the booster two weeks after. Here you can see it again rose to 30 times. So 67.6, 1830. So even in anti HIV negative group, where the antibody to hepatitis A were less than 20, that is considered cut off, the one dose of booster produced significantly high titers of. Hepatitis A antibody. Now, what happens if the natural infection again they should rise? So that is the thing that a single injection and this immune memory that even if it is anti-HIV negative, there is a significant immune memory and that leads to rise in the tide. So even in the after 17 years, subjects who were below required level GMC also produced more than required GMC once it got exposed to infection. And cellular immunity has good role of memory cell activation. And uh, uh, there were no significant difference in terms of protection between two groups post challenge. So that shows that it is not only the antigen specific memory T and B cells, it is also the promptly mounted an anamnestic antibody response to a booster dose and secretion of specific cytokines. And there is increase in the secretion interferon by CD3 T cells which was measured after a booster and interferon secretion from CD3, CD8 subset was remarkably higher than CD3 plus CD4 subset, which satisfied the characteristic of live attenuated vaccine to get a cellular response. So summary, in the randomized control trials, mainly in the foreign, in the China, but in one in the uh, Faridi at all in India in 2009, and here the protection was very good in the cohort studies. They were in the China as well as in the India. We have many cohort studies in India, mainly by Bhave and Dr. Mitra et al. And you can see the protection of 80 to 100%. Here also you can see 80 to 100%. And that persists even after 10 years, even after 17 years, and 12 years, 15 years. So there are so many studies. Now, what is the recommendation? So recommendation by WHO and Indian Academy of Pediatrics. So in the 2012, WHO has given recommendation of more than 12 months, the hepatitis A vaccine can be given either as live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine single dose or killed hepatitis A vaccine two doses, which are six to 12 months apart, but may be given up to 18 months apart. And in the recent IAP ACVIP guidelines, it is 12 months with the single dose of the live attenuated or killed dose, killed hepatitis A vaccine two doses with the six to 18 months gap. The minimum age is one year. 
In 2016, Indian Academy of Pediatrics recommends live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine as single dose or two dose schedule of killed vaccine. So in 2016, first time, the IAP recommended live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine as the part of the immunization schedule in a single dose. In the previous one, uh, before 2016, IAP did not said clearly, it said that live attenuated vaccine, all vaccines should be given in two doses about hepatitis A. And live attenuated hepatitis A vaccine can be used, but Indian studies are very less. So this is the revised statement here. You can say that uh, it is a comparable immune response between hepatitis A live vaccine and hepatitis A killed vaccine within 7 to 28 days. So it can be given uh, subcutaneously in the children, 1 to 15 years, and uh, uh, that uh, single dose should be administered after 6 to 18 months of the first for that killed vaccine. So in the live attenuated vaccine, single separate dose and uh, killed vaccine is the double dose. And second dose of live attenuated hepatitis vaccine is not recommended. So this is the IAP immunization schedule here. You can see hepatitis A 12 months and 18 months. But at 12 months, it is clearly written single dose for live attenuated vaccine. So take home message, hepatitis A case mortality increases with age. And permanent hepatitis is rare, but associated with high mortality. That is very important. That's why there is need for hepatitis A vaccination. India has moved from high to intermediate zone of hepatitis A endemicity. Some zones are low and some zones are high, but it is overall it is intermediate because of improved sanitation. Good hygiene as well as hepatitis A vaccination in the uh, private sector that is being prof, uh, preferably used and uh, it's very uh, properly used in last 10 years that we have seen. And single dose of live vaccine is adequate as per IAP as well as WHO. And it provides both humoral and cell mediated immunity. And the protection is 20, but live vaccine can provide tighter up to 100 and more than that. And it uh, is backed up with the Indian trials for five years, even up to 15 years. And advantage of memory cells with the, we have 17 years booster challenge test and last pain because of the subcutaneous route. Thank you so much. So we can use both the vaccines. That is very important. It's not that we should use hepatitis A uh, uh, live vaccine only. The thing is this, that uh, even if we are using live, because previously like that, it's a Chinese vaccine and it may not be of the good quality. But uh, nowadays we know that uh, we have Indian studies so many. So we know that it is again a very good vaccine and we can have this as a good option. So we can have killed vaccine in two dose schedule or live vaccine in one dose schedule, uh, whatever we want. Both are similarly efficacious and both are good. Thank you so much. Thank you. थैंक यू सो मच सर मुझे तो याद आ गया कुछ अपने पीजी की टाइम की याद कि जिस तरीके से आपने प्रेजेंटेशन किया रियली आई अप्रिशिएट दैट द वे द वे यू हैव प्रेजेंटेड थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वाजपेयी साहब थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सो मच सर सो नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर रवि शंकर इज he is not uh, in the panel, sir. I mean, he is not on the channel. So I request Dr. Patil. Patil, sir. So I request Dr. Patil, sir, please summarize the are uh, today at this academic phase. Dr. Patil, sir. I think he is not in the panel. He is he is left. I think. Uh, so. 
आई पी वारा बरवरा के सेक्रेटरी जो है सुबोध सर प्लीज समराइज द होल एकेडमिक टुडे प्रोग्राम एंड वाइंड इट एंड सुबोध सर एम आई ऑडिबल सुबोध सर सुबोध इज इट सुबोध गुप्ता और सुबोध बाजपेई जी सर जी सर सुबोध गुप्ता सर आई एम सुबोध बाजपेई सर ओके सर ओके थैंक यू so the <clears throat> whole of this uh, module can be summarized uh, it is such a and uh, prevalent disease both in developing and developed countries that's why the iap central iap has taken up this erroneous uh, endemic um, so uh, endemic disease as a module and uh, there are clear cut guidelines when to label the child Uh, with acute viral hepatitis without complications how to treat it and when to label the child as acute liver failure and the treatment of this and thirdly acute on chronic liver disease with treatment modalities uh, so that uh, there is no <clears throat> ambiguity in the treatment and it has been well illustrated with the various uh case presentations case scenarios that makes the things clear for the general pediatrician and lastly the uh, uh, this also make the, makes the things clear that uh, a disease for which most pediatricians think that it is a self limiting disease and uh, no vaccine is required because by the time the child grows up and reaches 6 to 10 years of age or so is already has got a natural infection and got the immunity which is not the case many cases in adolescent age they escape the in natural infection and simultaneously are not immunized and they are vulnerable to this infection which can take the severe form also and lastly the iap has recommended this one dose of live vaccine and uh, uh, two doses of this killed vaccine at a dose of, at an interval of 6 uh, to 12 months apart that's why that is a heartening to note that the india has uh, now in the intermediate uh, zone from the high and dominatrice zone this we can call pat for ourselves With the, with the uh, vaccination for HIV, which is available only in the private sector, and secondly, to the improved hygiene, sanitation, and the hand washing uh, technique, which has been uh, recommended by the government uh, from time to time. So I think this summarizes the whole. Uh, others can. Doctor Bunjan and others, uh, Doctor Sachin can add if I have left something. Thank you so much, Subhas sir. Thank you, Ji. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you. I am very thankful to all the faculty who was uh, uh, presented here. I am very thankful to Doctor Alkazwal, ma'am, for organizing uh, a program from AOP UP. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.